Hi, my name is Modu Diagne and uh, um, I'm from Senegal. Uh, I have been living in Barbados for the last 18 years. And um, yes, I am the owner uh, of AfricaNet, the African store in Sheraton Mall and the other branches in uh, Colonnade Mall in Bridgetown. AfricaNet is uh, the premier uh, African store in Barbados. It, uh, it has been around for the past, I would say, 10 years. Back then, in 2007, it was at Colima Rock. Um, then I had closed it and reopened it a few years back in High Street in Bridgetown. And then three, almost three years ago, I reopened it um, after COVID in uh, Sheraton Mall. And recently, I opened um, the second branch in, in Colonnade Mall in Bridgetown. At AfricaNet, you can find authentic African print. Um, you can find artifacts um, handcrafted. You can find clothing uh, ready to wear for men, women, children. Um, you can find um, skincare, shea butter, raw shea butter straight from Africa, uh, cocoa butter, black soap. You can find um, drums, you know, leather shoes. Um, and woven bags and um, laundry bag, ba baskets, etc. So you can really find a wide variety of products um, made in Africa, handmade, uh, and directly delivered here to Barbados in Africa at AfricaNet. Everything is made directly uh, in Africa, and um, I bring them from different parts of West Africa: um, Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, um, Togo. Um, and yes, I have business links there. Um, sometimes I travel and choose my own um, items and sometimes I ask them to send. Yes, definitely. I would say that you can see a progression in the acceptance of uh, uh, the African, um, African prints, I would say. And uh, I believe that the uh, uh, the, the efforts that the NCF have made in the celebration of African Awareness Month has, has helped a lot. Um, schools have uh, been embracing it. Now um, corporations, churches, you know, everybody is really celebrating um, the African Awareness Month. And I think that's a, that's a very good thing. And it, it is helping in, um, in, in the development of the African awareness. Yeah, yes, for sure. Uh, African Awareness is a big month for, for the business. Um, I, I wish it was like that every month of the year, for sure. <laughs> and and uh, even though it would be better that, you know, we people from African descent understood that, um, you know, Af the African history cannot be limited to just one month and that we should be celebrating this all year long. Uh, but th this is a beginning, and I think it's a good be beginning. Uh, yes, so as I said earlier, I have uh, African print fabric, but I also have ready-made uh, clothing for men, women, children. And uh, uh, what I find is that more and more and all throughout the year now, you have people who come and buy African print to make um, you know, the designs that they want. Even though I have a wide range of variety of, 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 of ready, uh, ready to wear, uh, sometimes for special occasions, um, you know, whether it is a wedding or a, a graduation, they want the fancy dress that stands out. And if I don't have it in, in stock, they would uh, uh, buy the fabric and get their seamstress or tailor to make something for the occasion. Uh, well, of course, when it is the African Awareness Month, the children wear is what goes the, uh, the most. But because, as I said, you have churches now that are celebrating and corporations that are celebrating, you also have a, a lot of sales of adult um, wear. But outside of the, of the African month, um, I find that men and women 
by on a regular basis. So there's a much more acceptance, of, bigger acceptance of the African wear to go to any um, everyday function, um, you know, and a function, invitation, wedding, um, church. So people are more and more uh, embracing the African um, print and buying uh, adult African wear uh, all year long. Yes, well, what, what, what I get all the time here is when people come and try an African um, suit, nice, beautiful suit with embroidery, they say they feel royal. They feel, you know, uh, uh, so elegant that they, they, they love it. So, and, and, and I tell them, but this is you. You feel good because this is you. This is, you know, we have, uh, people have convinced you that you should be in ties and, and, and shirts uh, made by other people, but this is where your ancestry is. So it's normal that you feel so good when you wear it, and I'm happy about that. And, and I think it's something that is developing more and more, and I'm very happy about it. I get that question all the time, why Barbados? And uh, beyond the, the, uh, the fact that Barbados is a beautiful place to live and do business, uh, I, I like to say uh, jokingly that I'm a, I'm a love refugee. <laughs> yes, so I'm a love refugee and people always ask me, love refugee, what do you mean? Yeah, that my wife is Barbadian and we met when we were studying in France and that's how I ended up in Barbados. Yes, I, I was born in Senegal, and when I was 11 years old, that's when I moved to France. Um, but I have been going ever since, every year when I was growing up and studying in France, every year I would go uh, back to Senegal. So I, I still have all of my family in Senegal. My grandmother is still there, my uh, aunts, my uh, cousins that I grew up with. So I definitely have a lot of memories. I wouldn't have to convince them. <laughs> Actually, talking about that, uh, today I have family coming, uh, yes, coming to visit, so from France and from Senegal. Um, so after this interview, I will be heading straight to the airport. I would say, yes, there are uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, um, and, and first, Beyond the fact that you know f the physical appearance of people, you know, you sometimes walk on on the street and you see somebody and you can tell this person is from this ethnic group in Senegal. You can tell the, the, the resemblance is just so striking. Um, so that's one aspect of it. Then the climate is the same. Um, the the landscape relatively similar. You know, the north, the, this southern part of Senegal is almost exactly the same as Barbados. And then in the culture, um, even though you have very much differences because Senegal is a majority Muslim um, and Barbados is a majority Christian, um, you have some things that you you know you can see. This comes from uh, from from West Africa and in Senegal as well. There's certain artifacts that I have that we played in Senegal, like the Wari game. Um, and in Senegal, it's called Wure. Yes. <laughs> and in Barbados, it's called Wari. So you can tell where that comes from. Yes, I was saying that uh, geographically speaking, um, Barbados is exactly the same latitude as, Barbados, uh, of Sen as Senegal. So but Senegal is the closest country in Africa to Barbados. And many people do not know that. But it's, if you look at the map, you will see straight from Senegal, um, you go uh, east, you would uh, butt into Barbados. Well, to tell you the truth, I never heard of Barbados before I met my wife. <laughs> and when she told me uh, that she was from Barbados, I thought she meant Bahamas which is more popular in Europe than Barbados. <laughs> so yes, uh, before, before I met her, I didn't know about Barbados. A very small island in the Caribbean, and, but a um, very beautiful island. And I was happy once I uh, came here on holiday, um, uh, summer holiday. I just fell in love with it, and that's how I decided to move here.
I said, studied uh, international trade and strategies. So my master's is in international trade and strategies. Um, advice that I would give is you have to, to, you have to, um, to be persistent. You have to be persistent. Um, the challenges are real. Um, even more so when you be dealing with Africa because of the lack of uh, uh, trade routes, um, the lack of uh, uh, um, connections, uh, air connections, uh, sea connections. Um, so it was a challenge and that's why I had closed the first store in, um, in Colima Rock because when I opened it and realized after opening it that, you know, bringing in um, goods from Africa was relatively challenging. With the years now, it has become a little bit easier, but it's still, compared to you know Northern America and Europe, it's still very much a challenge to bring things from um, from Africa. So, my uh, advice would be that first of all, you have to be willing to to travel to Africa. So you know the um, skepticism that exists between the Caribbean and Africa that has to um, to to disappear that has to to um, if you want to do business if you want to develop the business with Africa we have to embrace Africa and I think the government is doing a wonderful job in that aspect um, you know we have seen a, a huge um, improvement in the uh, relationship between Barbados in particular and and Africa and you can see that the other Caribbean nations are emulating Barbados in reaching out to Africa. Uh, I am very excited about it. I am, uh, I, am, I, I, am, I am very happy to see that development for sure because I have been here um, to experience the progression. So definitely um, when I first arrived there was almost no no relationship with Africa and now seeing you know the the awareness of the people to see the reach out of the Caribbean people to the African continent to see all of that is you know um, is, is wonderful um, uh, is encouraging and I am very happy and I'm doing my ultimate best to help in the, that development. Mm -hmm.